for our next news special report. And now a story you can't miss. In the quaint town of North Conway, a fourth grader named Adam did something extraordinary. He confronted Nikki Haley, a seasoned politician, with a question so candid and sharp that it left the political world reeling. Imagine a child's voice piercing through the noise of political rhetoric, exposing the intricate dance of political posturing. This wasn't just any question, it was a moment of truth, a reflection of the skepticism simmering within the conservative ranks. Haley, once a staunch Trump supporter, now caught in a whirlwind of changing allegiances. Think about it. A fourth grader understanding the complexities of political flip-flopping better than most pundits. So what does this mean for Haley, for the Republican Party, for our republic? Well, stay with us as we delve into this pivotal moment and don't miss my final thought on why this matters more than you might think. Now, before we dive into this eye-opening story about Nikki Haley, let's talk about something equally important, just like politics. The economy can be unpredictable. Gold, for instance, has soared past 2,000 an ounce. Reminds me of Haley's political journey, unexpected turns at every corner. Wars, rate cuts, national debt, fueling gold's rise, much like the current political tensions are shaping our nation's future. Trump warned about the U.S. dollar's instability, and it's crucial that we pay attention. And this is where Patriot Gold Groups comes in. They offer a no-fee-for-life IRA on qualifying rollovers. The number's on the screen. Give them a call, 888-857-9437, for your free investor guide. Protect your future, just like we need to protect our republic's values. That number again, 888-857-9437. Mention Next News for best-in-class service. Now, in a scene that would almost be comical if it weren't so revealing. Nikki Haley, the former U.S. ambassador and a once staunch Trump advocate, found herself in the crosshairs of a fourth grader's astute observation. In the quiet town of North Conway, New Hampshire, a child's question cut through the political pretense like a knife. Adam, the fourth grader in question, didn't just ask a question, he delivered a stinging indictment of Haley's political gymnastics. You're basically the new John Kerry. That's what he declared, likening Haley to the epitome of political flip-flopping. Now, here in this clip, you'll witness firsthand the discomfort and evasion that has come to characterize Haley's approach to tough questions. Watch. Hey, little guy, how are you? He's not going to give you the mic. No, I hold it. <laughs> so, thank you, Nikki. I wanted to ask you, so Chris Christie thinks that you're a flip-flopper on the Donald Trump issue. And... Honestly, I agree with him. And you're basically the new John Kerry on the. <laughs> you remember John Kerry from 2004. So my question is, how how can you be how can you change your opinion like that in just eight years? And will you pardon Donald Trump? <laughs> So fourth, fifth grade? No, fourth. fourth grade. Well, I, for one, am very proud of you for coming and very proud of you for listening and very proud of you for asking that question. So the first thing I'll tell you is politics is about distraction, right? And so people like my friends, Chris Christie, are going to say she's a flip-flopper. But let's look at it. What's he saying I'm flip-flopping on? He's basically saying that I'm not hitting Trump hard enough, right? The interesting part of this whole situation is anti-Trumpers think I don't hate him enough. And pro-Trumpers think I don't love him enough. And at the end of the day, the fact is, I'm just telling you the truth like I see it. It's not personal for me. It's never been personal for me. I told you I think he was the right president at the right time. I told you that I agree with a lot of his policies. But do I think he's the right president to go forward? No. We can't handle the chaos anymore. Chris is obsessed with Trump. I mean, God bless him. He's a friend. He's obsessed with Trump. He sleeps, eats, and breathes it every day. I'm thinking bigger than that. If we do that, we're no different than Trump. That's what we're trying to get away from, is, that, is the idea that we obsess about a person. This is about a country. We're better than that. We're bigger than that. So I am who I am. I tell my truth just like you told your truth, except I am no John Kerry. <laughs> his question. 
question, he asked if I would pardon Trump. And I've answered this before. I would pardon Trump. And the reason is, first of all, we don't know what they're going to find innocent, guilty, any of that. And we want everybody to be innocent until proven guilty. But the second thing is, if he is found guilty, a leader needs to think about what's in the best interest of the country. What's in the best interest of the country is not to have an 80-year-old man sitting in jail that continues to divide our country. What's in the best interest of the country would be to pardon him so that we can move on as a country and no longer talk about him. Now, the comparison to John Kerry, a figure often mocked by conservatives for his notorious flip-flops, is especially biting. It's not just a witty remark from a precocious kid. It's a mirror reflecting Haley's own contortions on key issues, particularly her waffling stance on Donald Trump. Now, let's not mince words here. Nikki Haley's political journey has been less a straight path and more a winding road of convenient U-turns. Initially, she was a vocal supporter of Trump, echoing his policies with what seemed like genuine conviction. But post-January 6th, Haley began to distance herself from Trump, adopting a more critical stance. The shift might seem like political evolution to some, but to many within the conservative base, it reeks of opportunism. The reality is that Haley's political maneuvering has left her in a no-win situation. She's trying to play both sides in a party still deeply divided over Trump's legacy. This approach may seem shrewd, but it's proving to be a tough sell to a base that values consistency and conviction. But Haley's troubles don't end there. Another moment that's drawn criticism and added fuel to the fire of her credibility issues come from her comments on the American Civil War. Haley, who often speaks eloquently about foreign wars and global conflicts, seems surprisingly tongue-tied when it comes to one of America's defining historical events. When asked about the cause of the Civil War, Haley dodged the obvious answer, slavery. Instead, she deflected with a dismissive, what do you want me to say about slavery? Next question? Yeah. So in the clip we're going to show you, you can see Haley's evasion in action, the telling moment that raises serious questions about her understanding of or willingness to acknowledge crucial aspects of American history. Watch. Please, um, what was the cause of the United States Civil War? Well, don't come with an easy question or anything. I mean, I think the cause of the Civil War was basically how government was going to run, the freedoms and what people could and couldn't do. What do you think the cause of the Civil War was? I'm sorry? I mean, I think it always comes down to the role of government. We need to have capitalism. We need to have economic freedom. We need to make sure that we do all things so that individuals have the liberties so that they can have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to do or be anything they want to be without government getting in the way. What do you want me to say about slavery? Next question. Now, this reluctance to address the root causes of civil war is perplexing, especially for someone who positions herself as a knowledgeable and principled leader. It's not just a gaffe or a misstep. It's a glaring omission that speaks volumes about her approach to contentious issues. And Haley's reluctance to confront the reality of slavery as a central cause of civil war is more than just a historical oversight. It's a failure to acknowledge the fundamental truth about our nation's past. So what does this all mean for Nikki Haley's political future? Well, these incidents, both the exchange with a fourth grader and her comments on the Civil War, paint a picture of a politician struggling to find her footing. In her attempt to navigate the choppy waters of GOP politics, Haley has ended up alienating many who once saw her as a potential leader of the party. These moments of evasion and inconsistency have not gone unnoticed. The base conservative, particularly those who value straightforwardness and adherence to core principles, is becoming increasingly weary of Haley. The perception of her as a neocon war hawk who flip-flops on key issues is hardening. And Haley's predicament is emblematic of a larger issue within the Republican Party. The party's in a state of flux, trying to reconcile the Trump era with the path forward. And leaders like Haley, who attempt to straddle the line between the pro-Trump and anti-Trump factions, are finding it a challenging task. Now, in conclusion, Nikki Haley's responses to these controversial moments reveal more than just her political strategy. 
They highlight a broader problem of credibility and principle within certain segments of the GOP. Haley's attempts to position herself as a unifying figure are falling flat, as she seems unable to take a firm stance on critical issues. As we close this report, remember, if you got value from this in-depth analysis and unfiltered perspective, tap subscribe, stay informed and engaged as we navigate these complex political times together. Now let's get to my final thought. Let's be clear about one thing. Nikki Haley's recent missteps are more than just isolated incidents. They're symptomatic of a deeper problem. She embodies the very essence of the establishment swamp that has long plagued our great republic. In contrast, Donald Trump represents a stark antidote to the woes we're facing under Joe Biden's administration. Trump's straightforward, no-nonsense approach is exactly what America needs in these trying times. As we look ahead to the GOP 2024 primary, it's imperative that we choose a leader who stands firm in their convictions, unswayed by the shifting sands of political expediency. Haley's recent performances, riddled with evasion and inconsistency, only reinforce the necessity of a strong, unwavering leader like Trump. The choice is clear. To rescue America from the clutches of the establishment and restore our nation's greatness, we must rally behind Trump in the GOP primary. The future of our republic depends on it. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.